<laughs> Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Matthew and today I'm joined by another one of my amazing viewers, Amy. Amy, how are you doing today? I'm really well, thank you, Matt. How are you? Yeah, I'm also really well. Thank you very much for asking. Now, Amy has made some amazing leaps in her manifestation journey, and today she's here to share some of that story and really hope to give you some sort of ideas on how to go forward with your manifestation journey to get the same kind of successes and enjoyment in the process as she does. So with that said, Amy, on to you. What's your journey been like and how have you got from where you were to basically where you are in this amazing place? I think like everybody with the manifesting journey, I started with just consuming so much content. Like I'd have one favorite manifestation coach and then I didn't like them anymore. And I thought, oh, this isn't working. Maybe not didn't like them, but I just sort of didn't resonate with them and then moved on to somebody else. And I did initially spend so much time just assuming content over and over. And then as I started to kind of have small successes, I then started to rely um, more on my own kind of, um, I guess, consumption of the knowledge and what worked for me. Um, so I would say Sammy Ingram um, and obviously yourself have been two of the most influential coaches in my experience so far. And what I love about Sammy is she um, is all about kind of robotically affirming. And um, as I was saying to you earlier, Matt, I know that there is kind of a controversial opinion on that. Like a lot of people say you do have to feel it real. Um, and in my personal opinion, yes, that is great as well. But I've had so much success just from robotically affirming, um, whether it's for something like a text message or kind of my self concepts. I've noticed that, you know, you, you can get some of those things instantly. I remember once I was affirming for a text and I literally got a text as I was affirming for it. And it just kind of made me laugh. Um, so that's happened a few times, actually. But I think for me, the biggest change I've noticed in myself is definitely self concept. And I think before I never used to think that that was an important part of manifestation I thought you just affirm for desire and you'll get it and in my experience I did get the desire but because I hadn't changed myself which is what everybody always talks about changing who you are innately as a person and, and kind of your values and and what you think about yourself you're not going to see anything reflected outside of you really for long or certainly nothing sort of sustainable um so what would happen is I'd affirm whether it's for my SP or money. And then a few days later, my old insecurities would come back of they're going to leave me or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be skinned again. And because I hadn't addressed those kind of core issues, of course, that's what happened. And then I'd have to manifest them all over again or manifest money again. And it just became like this. It never kind of plateaued out. It was just this never ending kind of process. And then I started to listen to coaches that talked more about self-concept and how it was such an important part of the process. And I thought, okay, I've never really done self-concept properly. Let's really give it a try. Um, and I started with just, you know, I am worthy, I am special, all those kind of surface level ones. But I realized they didn't really address the core wound I had, um, which was a, a wound that I didn't think I was worthy of romantic love, um, also money, just generally, you know, in lots of areas of my life. Um, and it was the one affirmation you gave me, Matt, actually, which was, um, I always have been and always will be more than good enough, exactly as I am for a loving, committed relationship, which is one I say the most. Um, and when I say it, I really say it with such enthusiasm and passion and really, really kind of believe it as I say it. Um, and it, it's really, really changed my life, actually. Um, so I've probably been saying that now, maybe about two weeks. And in those two weeks, um, I not, off, not only got offered a job, um, I actually initially turned the job down because I thought, well, they're not offering me the salary I want. And the old me would never have done it. It would have just been, you know, grateful to get the job. So I turned it down and then not only did they then offer me the money I want, um, also my manager who I thought was going to say, oh yeah, you know, you go for this job if you feel like you want to go. He actually not only matched the salary, but paid me, he offered me an eight grand pay rise, which was just incredible. Like that's never happened before. Um, and just, just simple things like people at work are treating me differently. I'm lucky that people always were nice to me. Um, but I just feel like people are treating me with more respect, really kind of reflecting back the new kind of, um, 
you know, the new version of myself, essentially, like, you know, my manager said to me today, you're so worthy, you're so, you're great at your job, it'll be, I'm so glad that we're not losing, I would have been heartbroken, and everybody piped up, and I thought, oh my gosh, like, I really am loved, and it's only really because I've been saying those things to myself over and over and over. That's, that's amazing. And a whole eight grand, like you, you might have to start teaching me how to do this stuff. But, um, <laughs> so would you, is it fair to say then based on that, that the self-concept work has taken you much further than the initial work, you know, you just mentioned it never really plateaued. Would you say that if you continue yeah. in what you're doing now, then it's more than likely things are going to plateau and you're going to put plateau up here and not just kind of maybe down here? Yeah, absolutely. Because I think before I would often have, and I think it can become a little bit self-indulgent in times when you have like the victim mentality, can't it? Because you're used to having those negative thoughts and kind of indulging in them. But now I won't even entertain that. I'm like, no, why would I ever think that about myself? And, And nobody should think that about themselves. And it's almost gone so far that when I hear someone else say that about themselves, I say, don't ever say that about yourself. That is not true. Everybody is inherently worthy of money, love, the job you want and it doesn't matter what you look like it none of that matters like everybody is and I kind of I really want other people to feel the same way about themselves as well which is really nice yeah absolutely and hopefully by coming on here talking today that more people are going to see that and actually just start to put themselves first instead of the the money or the SP or something now Definitely. your journey sounds amazing but how exactly did you do it so to speak as in like did you have any kind of routine or like what what's your kind of day to day with trying to implement these affirmations whether it's the one that you got from me or other ones that you may have seen around the place what's a, a day in your life so to speak so i um always affirm for two hours a day and i split that out throughout the day so i do 30 minutes Um, on self-concept work and 30 minutes of SP work but I kind of alternate how I do it so I'll set my phone to 10 minutes in the morning and I'll start with self-concepts because you've got to start with yourself you're the most important person in your reality the SP can wait so start with myself um, and then sometimes I'll have like a five ten minute break and then I'll start on the SP one and I'll do that for 10 minutes and then I'll come back to self-concept again for 10 minutes and then back to SP, then self-concept, then SP. So I've done three, you know, three for SP, three for me. And then sometimes in the car, I'll do it as well, actually, because I find that's just dead time. So you may as well use it, um, you know, for affirming. So then I'll do another 10 minutes in the car for both topics. And then I've thought, right, I've done my 40 minutes. Then I'll only have, you know, the 20 left to do when I get home. Um, so then I'll do those. Sometimes I even do it if I'm watching a film that I'm not particularly enjoying or if I've got something on in the background, I'll just do it as well. Um, yeah, I think affirming is definitely the thing that I've noticed has made the difference for me. Repetition, you're really telling your brain a new story. And I know that's what everybody talks about, but essentially that's really all you're doing. Um, I think if you do have time to visualize as well, that does help. I do try, I have tried SATs and I'm not. I think that's something I do need to practice on because it is actually quite difficult falling asleep to an idea because you sort of sometimes jolt yourself awake. Um, But I think that's one I'd like to practice a little bit more. But um, the one that I've definitely noticed the most results with is just affirming. And sometimes even just not, as Sammy said and yourself have said, you don't even have to always feel it. You can just literally say it and say it and and it, it sort of comes into fruition as well yeah absolutely um that sounds amazing as a as a a daily routine for sure have you ever had those kind of instances though where you've said an affirmation and your mind kind of kicks back and if you have how did you handle it in those moments because i think with affirmations that's probably the thing that people struggle with the most it's very easy to affirm but it's not so easy to counter that this is not a lie if that was true you'd see it and all of those kind of things so did you ever have that I have had that actually and sometimes I will say if I have a contrary thought subconscious mind ignore that or I'll say that's ridiculous so I'm kind of undoing the work um but I think something that's helped me quite a lot is I did have OCD for a while and I would get these terrible intrusive thoughts not about manifesting or anything but just normal kind of thoughts that people with OCD have and luckily I don't suffer with that anymore um but I had an amazing coach and she said to me when you get an intrusive thought that you don't like don't pay attention to it just disregard if you don't like it just imagine almost not that you haven't had it but you notice it's there and just kind of go okay changing channel let's change the channel and that's kind of what I've learned to practice when I get um a thought that's you know, a negative or not in alignment with what I'm trying to manifest, I'll just change the channel in my head or just let it pass through me as opposed to kind of jumping on it and thinking, oh God, oh no. Because if, if you don't care about it, if you let it pass, it's not going to manifest. 
Mm, yeah, we're uh, we're not our th- we're not our thoughts. We're the awareness that we place on them, and we don't always have to create some sort of negative judgment towards everything. And that's a, a perfect way of doing it, like changing the channel. I really like that actually. Yeah. Um, so, but other than what you may have mentioned in this call today so far, is there anything that you would recommend to someone that might be just starting out or having some real big troubles with getting their first, whether it's small or big success? Some of the you think could be a good little tip for them that's a really good question i think initially find a coach that really resonates with you because i think there are so many different ones out there and i don't know if you found this in your own journey as well but for me beginning on the beginning journey i i I can consume so much content and it was really and then i was following certain things that someone said and certain things and then some of them contradict them each other don't they because some of them don't believe in affirming and i think find one that really resonates with you um that and then kind of go along with what they're teaching um and then i think also find a routine that you know is going to be sustainable um i know some of them say you need to affirm for four hours a day and that's in my opinion that's just not sustainable i don't have time to affirm for four hours a day i've got hobbies i've got friends i've got a life i've got to work you know i go to the gym like i don't have time for that so i think definitely find um a routine that you know you can sustain because what can happen is you think right i'm going to affirm four hours a day and you do it for a day and then you're sick of it and then you just quit and so yeah you need to find something that's sustainable and i think also find if you can try and do it in a way that you enjoy it um because for me i do really enjoy it and i think because i enjoy it i don't really see it as a task um especially self-concept because you're really making yourself feel so good about yourself when you're saying them um i think try and enjoy it as well and and I know it's the oldest, you know, thing that everyone says, but really it is just persisting Um, because sometimes it can take a while for things to come into fruition. And even, you know, sometimes now I still catch myself thinking, looking to the 3D and thinking, I don't have it yet. But then I say things to myself, would I be thinking this if I had my desire? Or if I were who I wanted to be now, would I be dwelling on this? No, I wouldn't. So let's let it pass through and come back to kind of what I want or maybe even just visualize. So perhaps if you're manifesting an SP and you have a thought, oh, they haven't texted me yet. I just sometimes just close my eyes and say, no, like there they are kind of thing. Like you can feel them there. And that sort of helps me get back on track. Yeah, I really like that. It's um, the, the part that you mentioned about like finding a routine that works for you. It's kind of like the compound effect. Like, yes, you can sort of blow yourself up one day doing 24 hours out of the 24 hours of affirming, but that's not sustainable. And it would be better for you in the long run to do maybe an hour or two hours a day for a longer period of time and sort of have that consistency as opposed to doing loads in one day and then nothing but spiraling for the next six and then loads in one day and then nothing but spiraling for the next six, which I think is actually probably one thing that a lot of people do do. They When they first get into it and get like some affirmations that they like, they just go at it and at it and at it and then they get tired, then they get burnt out and then they struggle to keep going and then that's when those thoughts of, why is it not here yet? What am I doing wrong? Come in. And obviously that's when they're starting to recreate the the negative. So <clears throat> I think those are three amazing tips, to be honest. And I think that the the emphasis that you made on self-concept is, is extremely important. As I've preached for a very long time now, self-concept on its own will save your life more than focusing on any kind of singular desire. Um, as you experience working on self-concept, got yourself an eight and eight thousand pound pay rise. So that's huge <laughs> and many other yeah. amazing things. So that's actually it for from me, Amy. I don't think I have any other questions. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to say at, at all, just in general? It doesn't have to necessarily have to be any tips or anything, but just anything that you wanted to say to people that might be watching this right now um, before we end off? <clears throat> um, yes, I'd actually say one more tip, which I forgot to mention, um, is with kind of your lifestyle try and really look after yourself so make sure you're eating well sleeping well because all those kind of things help regulate your mood so i was finding if i didn't sleep very well the next day i'd be a bit more emotional or tired and then i'd kind of fall off the wagon so sleeping well eating well and if you can exercise that really helps you instill discipline because for me you know i find when i'm exercising and i'm keeping really fit and doing my hobbies it's like a real discipline thing and if you can be disciplined with your body then you can be disciplined with your mind they kind of go together um and then finally just don't give up i think if you really want something even if it's been months or for some people a year i think just keep going because if you want something enough then why does it really matter and i know we all have moments where we want something to hurry up but i think if you if you want it just don't give up even if someone someone says you should why if you want it keep going 
Yeah, absolutely. And that final point actually ties heavily into self-concept with the idea that you should trust yourself. If you want something, regardless of what the 3D says, regardless of what anybody else says, absolutely go for it. And if you do go for it, regardless of what you're seeing, then you're showing that you have trust in yourself. And as a result, your subconscious mind is going to be pushing out a lot of good things for you. Because if you can put yourself first, then everyone else is going to have a much easier time doing the same. Definitely. But um, yeah, so that's it from me. Thank you so much, Amy, for coming on today and having such an amazing talk. Um, it, I hope it's really eye-opening for a lot of people that are, are not putting themselves first enough. Um, and yeah, again, I said it, but I say again, thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Right, everybody else, thank you so much for watching. And yeah, I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.